Yeah, so you was already in the music and things like that had already, y'all had already made y'all imprint. So I want to ask you about LOM. Mm -hmm. At what point did you meet all of the members and uh, how did that come about? Uh, me, Rambo, Gutta, uh, I grew, I knew them like growing up. Um, I kind of, I met 80s like when, like probably around uh, the time, a little bit before LOM was put together. And I can't even remember. Peels, uh, I kind of, I think I met Peels, I was like in high school too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but Gutter and Rambo, I, I met them like I was growing up, like elementary school. I knew them, mm -hmm. and that's all the that's all the uh main artists in the group that you just named. Yeah, me, Rambo, Eighties, Gutter, Fields. Yeah, and Eighties, you know, he from the East Side, so yeah. How did that really? How did he make it all the way to Inkster? Just childhood stuff. Eighties uh, mama lived in Inkster, so yeah. he was always out there. So I think that's how that came about. Okay. All right, yeah, man. We're gonna talk about eighties a little later. So uh who inspires you to rap? Um, I think Rambo and Gutter, all all of them, man, they they just was in the studio so much and I never really was taking it serious. I ain't gonna say taking it serious because I had never did it yet, but they was just in the studio one day playing around and um I think they asked me to get on the song or told me to write something and I did and the shit came out hard. Mm -hmm. And from there I just kept on jumping on songs. Yeah, so they was already doing their thing. Yeah, they was already, they already had a, it was a thousand grams before it was LOM. Yeah, okay, I yeah. think I, I just heard you say that in a, a humble soul. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, but I never knew that, so that's definitely uh, new information. Shout out to Humble Soul for that. But uh, so uh, y'all first project came about, was it The Bricks Over or Multiple Hustles? I was no, trying to Multiple get it right. Multiple Hustles was the first right. project. Yeah, that's what I thought, but on the, uh, on the platforms, I think I seen the bricks over, like the date on it was kind of crazy or whatever. Yeah, that's because I, I, man, they put me through so much shit, re-uploading all that yeah. shit. So that's that's why the dates was like that. Okay, so what was the process of like making multiple hustles? That's a that's a legendary CD coming out of coming out of Inkster, not just Inkster, but just Michigan. Period. You know. Yeah, I just feel like everybody was like in a different bag around that time, man. We was. Like the Doughboys and Team Eastside was on that shit around that time. So it's like everybody, like we can't come with no weak shit. So we just was recording, talking about our life, the shit that was going on. That shit was just coming out hard, man. The production on them tapes just with Gutta and K Money, that shit just made you want to just talk and say some sweet shit. So that's yeah. how that really came about. And when y'all released it, what was y'all expectations? Did y'all expect it to do what it did? No, I mean, see, I. No, not really. I didn't expect it to do what it did. You know, I was always used to like fast money and stuff. So, you know, not really seeing no music or seeing a lot of money coming from coming from music. I really wasn't really like tuned into it like that. It wasn't until recently I started seeing other people making a killing off music that I'm really like, oh, this shit really can pay off. Okay, and y'all got y'all got a good feedback, of course, but was it any bad feedback? Did anybody have some bad? No, nah, hell no. Nah. Everybody think that that tape is a classic. I think all of them tapes is classic. Yeah. I've never heard no bad feedback from none of the group tapes. I've heard bad feedback about solo shit that I didn't drop, but mm -hmm. never from the group tapes. Yeah, and on there, I think <coughs> I'll say maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure with too many people before y'all coming out of Inkster. But uh, I would say maybe that's my introduction to the Inkster sound. Like, right. is this something called the Inkster sound? To me, it is. Maybe to Inkster, it is. But um, I like, guess it is so. such thing. I don't think so. Um, kind of like the persona yeah. of an Inkster person that we was we was talking about earlier. In a I feel sense. like it come off in the music as well. <clears throat> I think like as far as like the production is different. I feel yeah. like the, our producers is way different. So I think that may make us sound different on the song. Yeah, because I, I could kind of tell somebody from Inkster. Yeah. From a person from Detroit or right. wherever else. Like, I can tell by the way they say it and and uh, just the beats and things like that. So Yeah, we got our own, like, lingo and shit we yeah. say. And, like, we say bro a lot. And, yeah. Like, it's a bunch of different terms that we use that the motherfucker be like, oh, yeah, he's he not from the city. Yeah. So, on there, you y'all have Multiple Hustles, the single, mm -hmm. uh, Road Trips, Pros, You Tripping. And fifty six uh bars being your standout songs from uh Multiple Hustles Volume One. So with y'all having so many of them records that hit off of that first one, like how did that feel? Y'all hearing people banging y'all stuff in the car on the regular, like yeah, definitely. What was it like? 
Yeah, hell yeah. Like, our shit was, like, going just as crazy, like, in the city as the city artists, for real. Like, our shit was just was getting played just as much as Doughboys and Team Eastside, for real. So, that shit was kind of different. And this was, like, kind of before, like, social media got the popping, popping. So, yeah. we was, like, selling actual CDs and shit, man. And, yeah. You know, this was, like I said, before YouTube was popping. And we don't even got, we didn't have a lot of videos. Like, that was one of our big mistakes we didn't have videos to, yeah. to a lot of our shit so that's why i'm just so consistent now because i see a lot of the mistakes that we was making back then mm -hmm. yeah videos weren't really popping back then right. you know like the dope boys and team inside everybody they wasn't really doing that i had made a post the other day about stun hard and, and I, when i was thinking about it they was like really like the first people from this generation that was really consistently dropping music videos right yeah, so up until that point, it was really just we download your junk on the phone, the ringtone. Yeah. You buy the CD, bang in the car, whatever. You you probably had YouTube. For sure. Things like that. But yeah, it really wasn't no go to iTunes and all that. So you had to really be making some noise. Was it because y'all was just all popular? Y'all was known from where y'all was from? Or? I think we just was wasn't as um knowledgeable to everything back then uh, i don't think we had a lot of videographers just popping back then uh, back then you probably only had joseph mcfast and super ray and like that was pretty much it wasn't really too many people that was just shooting videos so we wasn't really thinking about that i'm not thinking okay we shoot videos that's gonna take our shit to the next level we just thinking about just making music now but i was talking about as far as uh how well it did was do you think it's because as a collective y'all was just so popular from where y'all was from but known for doing whatever y'all was doing and stuff think, like that, or I was it just the music? I think it was because of the popularity. I think it was because the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the music is real good. Some people might not go back, but I remember even before I knew we was gonna sit down and do this, I had listened to it maybe probably about two years ago. Just went back and I'm like, man, yeah, it was really all good. Like as a group, like the yeah. music was good too. Yeah, that shit came together. Like it was like it sounded like it was supposed to be together. Like yeah.